God. Praise God. And let the people of God say amen. Amen. We thank God for bringing us here again. Uh, today we have a very, very important topic. Um, it's called the Titanic. I believe uh, many of us uh, will have seen the that movie, the Titanic, um, or read about it. If you are, if you are still young, a uh, little. Uh, maybe you've done it in your history class so we're going to be talking about the titanic today uh we are going to deal with the causes what caused um the titanic to be the titanic you know as we all know it in the history books uh, but before we start let us pray father we thank you we praise your holy name be thou exalted O lord and father as we have come to your table we ask, O oh Lord, that you feed us from above. Lord, that we will leave your table well fed with more understanding and knowledge of your word. Lord, shed your light upon our hearts that we will not be blind. Let your light shine upon the blind spots in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, our case study today is Samson. Remember, the topic is Titanic, and the case study is Samson. So, Samson is the Titanic we want to discuss about in the Bible. Uh, we are going to start by reading the book of Ephesians, chapter 2, verse 10, Ephesians 2, 10. It says, For we are God's handiwork or workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. What that is saying is that before you were born, God already finished your assignment that he has for you before your parents, before my parents even dreamt of having me or having you. So that's what that Bible passage is saying. Judges chapter 13, verse 5, Judges 13, 5, For behold, you shall conceive a, and bear a son, and no razor, that is blade, shall come upon his head, for the child shall be a Nazarite to God from the womb, and he shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hand of the Philistines. Uh, if you want to know what uh, uh, a Nazarite is or the Nazarite law, I would say you cross-reference that with the book of Numbers, chapter 6, verse 1, and stop at 21. Uh, you can read everything about the Nazarite. We, it's a different uh, lesson on its own that we cannot go into today. Uh, so those are Bible texts uh, for foundation starting out. Now, the story is about Samson, and that um, passage we just read in the book of Judges uh, was from the angel of God to uh, uh, Manoah's wife. The Bible never gave us a name, so we just call her Mrs. Manoah. Uh, and uh, the angel was telling Mrs. Manoah how she's going to have a baby boy, and, um, and the assignment that God has for that child. So let's, let's go into a lesson. What is the meaning of Samson? Samson means like the sun or sunshine. And at this point, I would say if you are a parent or a grandparent, please don't give your children or grandchildren names because of the sound. Names have a lot to do with people's purpose in life, with people's path in life. Know the name of a child, know the meaning before you give that child a name because every day that child is called by a name, that name that you are giving him or her and he's answering yes, guess what? He's agreeing with everything that has to do with that name. And if it's a bad name or a meaningless name, it's like that child ignorantly for no cause of their own 
answering to a curse. So please, I just want to put that out there. So Samson means like the sun or sunshine. Who was Samson? Samson was the child given by God to Manoah and his wife after many years of barrenness. Samson's birth was preceded by angelic visitations, twice to be precise, and divine instructions. The angel of God told uh, Manoah's wife not to eat anything from divine grapes or grape juice or anything uh, because the child is, will be consecrated to God right from the womb. And um, only few people, including our Lord Jesus Christ, uh, uh, that their birth had that kind of um, divine visitation, th that their birth was preceded by angelic visitation to their parents. So why was Samson born? So we know this is no ordinary child for God to send an angel uh, to tell his parents. So why? Why was he born? Samson was born for a planned design. God created Samson with the gift of natural physical strength like no other human in history even till today. This was a deliberate divine design for the job that God had for Samson, which involved physical fights and moving or destroying of things. You see, I tell people, you are not an accident. Your biological composite your, the circumstances surrounding your birth, the family you come from, even the geographical uh, uh, location where you were born or raised. Listen, God had put everything together to fit into his assignment for your life. Nothing comes to God by accident, by like, ooh, I didn't see this coming. No. Now, you may experience some circumstances in life that are not good. God didn't give you that. No, because we live in a bad world. But God already foresaw that, and he knew how he was going to use it for your good and his own glory, if you let him. So God deliberately designed Samson to be extraordinarily strong as a human being. Have you found your own deliberate divine design? Huh? Have you? Have you looked at your life to, to see that divine design that God put there that you know that you know this is what I'm supposed to do in life? If you don't know, let me tell you why. If you don't know Jesus, there is no way you are going to know it. No. Because the Bible says, it's the glory of God to hide a thing. But it's the glory of the kings. And the Bible calls us kings. I mean the children of God. To search it out. You see, you don't know what your divine design is. Nobody knows right off the bat when they are born. You have to find it out. And it's through Jesus that you can find it. Because he is the way. You see, I believe it, uh, this statement was credited to Mark Twain. Uh, and he said, there are two most important days in someone's life. The day you were born and the day you found out why you were born. You see, let's go to the book of James, chapter 1, verse 17. James 1, 17, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the father of light that is the father the god who created light with whom there's no variableness that is there's no shifting neither shadow of turning that is it, it doesn't flip flop see that's our god so everything about you is perfect now i'm not talking about your behavior we all have our shortcomings and all that but your skin color, your race, 
where you were born, the circumstance, I'm telling you, God looked at everything and it's all a perfect package. And he gave you to this world as a gift. You are a gift. Don't let the devil tell you otherwise. Don't let people, don't let them run you down, that you are nobody. You are a gift of God to this world. But you will not know your worth until you know Jesus. That's it. Your life is God's gift to you. What you do with your life is your gift to God. Let me say that again. Your life is God's gift to you. What you do with your life is your gift to God. I hope you are searching already if you don't know your divine design. Moving on. How did Samson, sunshine, how did he become a human Titanic? Now, if you are conversant with the story of the Titanic, it's not a good end. Uh-uh. If you look in at the picture on, on the screen, that's not a good picture, is it? Because that's a sinking ship. Beautiful, big, yes. But it's sinking. That's not a good sight. So how did Samson become a human titanic? Number one, Samson had a poisonous desire. Uh-huh. No one becomes a human wreck in one day. Oh, no. Mm -mm -mm. It's a combination of series of bad choices over a long period of time. See? If you are making bad choices every day, one of God's authority is that he is trackable. His authority is trackable, so he gives you multiple chances to correct your problem. He gives you chances. Now, as you are doing that, if you fail to change the cause, you are destroying yourself piecemeal. You are committing suicide by degree, you see. So Samson's journey into the abyss of life began when he refused to marry from Israel against God's command and his parents' admonition. Instead, he desired to marry from the Philistines. The Philistines were uncircumcised and they were an enemy nation. And God already told them, uh-uh, don't intermarry with these people because they are my enemies. Let's go to the book of Judges, chapter 14, verse 3b. Listen to Samson speaking to his parents now. And Samson said to his father, because the father and mother said, why, why do you want to marry from there? He said, get her for me, for she pleases me well. Like a, like a, like a toddler throwing tantrum. See, get her for me, for she pleases me well. Although God, not, God was not pleased with Samson's disobedience, God allowed Samson to have his way. Remember, God will not force his, his, his command on anybody. Because God was going to use Samson to attack the Philistines anyway. Nevertheless, this indiscriminate decision earned Samson some troubles in his personal life. You see, it brings to my mind when I was preparing for this message, uh, the, the story of a gentleman very, very dear to my family, very close to, to us. And um, he, he, his family, they were going through a rough time financially at the time. So uh, he went for many job interviews and all that. Well, cut a long story short, finally he, he got uh, a job in one of the companies and um, they talked about the whole thing. It was to start the job tomorrow. And uh, he slept that night. And the Lord spoke to this gentleman in his sleep. And uh, uh, he, he saw a big, long table of full, full of food, like a banquet. And he was going to grab food because he was hungry. And he said the, the, head, uh, the head chef came to him in that vision and said, I wouldn't take that food if I were you. And he said, why? Because I'm cooking something very special for you. 
But I'm hungry. He said, well, you are free if you want to take it. You see, that's God's permissive will. But his perfect will was for that individual to wait for the food that God was cooking. So he said, okay, in that vision, he, 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 he put the food back and he woke up. So he told his wife, I'm not going to go to that job. Oh, but you're supposed to start this morning. No. So he called it off and all that. And today, the story is different for that family. You see? So if God is telling you, well, I have something better for you, but it's your choice if you want to take this, you better don't take it. You better don't. So you don't say, oh, but God told me I could have it. Uh-uh. God will always let you know. I have something better, but it may take some time. But if you are such in a hurry, if you want, help yourself. Listen, you better don't help yourself. Because you are going the way of Samson. That's poisonous desire. The permissive will of God is not the best for you. Okay? Let's go to the book of Proverbs, chapter 12. Verse 15, it says the way of a fool is right in his own eyes. What do we know? But a wise man is he who listens to counsel. The Bible calls Jesus in the book of Isaiah, I believe chapter 9 verse 6, the counselor. is the first to, to have that title, the counselor. All these fruitcake counselors that you see all around, they are not the real deal. Jesus is the real counselor. So when he's telling you, hey, I have something better, you better listen. Because what you want to go for that is less than God's best is a poisonous desire. To walk in God's perfect will is to become God's responsibility. To walk in God's permissive will is to own the responsibility. Let me say that again. To walk in God's perfect will is to become his responsibility. To walk in God's permissive will is to own the responsibility. That means you own the responsibility, not God. But when you listen to God and you walk in his perfect will, you become his responsibility. Whatever consequence comes out of that journey, God will say, yeah, I told him or I told her to go on that journey. But Samson didn't do that. So he had a poisonous desire. That was his number one problem. Moving on. Samson had a polluting diet. He had a polluting diet. Samson ate honey from the carcass of an animal. A Nazarite was not allowed to touch any dead thing let alone eat anything from it because this will pollute his Nazarite vow. But Samson did so, thus desecrating himself. Let's go to the book of Numbers, chapter 6, verse 6, Numbers 6, 6. It says, all the days that he separates himself to the Lord, this is the, uh, God is talking to the Nazarite now. He shall not go near a dead body. I think that was clear enough, right? What did Sam Samson do? Let's go to the book of Judges. God said, if you are a Nazarite, don't go near anything dead. Judges 14, verse 8b to 9a. Judges 14, 8b to 9a. And behold, a swarm of bees and honey were in the carcass of the lion that Samson had killed uh, earlier. He took some of it in his hand and went along eating. Did you see that? He was breaking the law of God right there. As a Nazarite, he knows he, he, he knows he's not supposed to eat it. But he couldn't be bothered anyway because he had married a Philistine and nothing happened to him. And now he's taking it a step further, which is taking him one step lower. Why Samson's problem was literal food for our dispensation, honey from the carcass is any impure thing that we feed our minds and senses upon. What do you watch when your family is not around? Huh? When you're on a business trip in a hotel, what do you watch? What do you do? 
Let the Holy Spirit convict you. What do you think? Do you gossip about people? Do you backbite? Huh? That is your own honey, heart of the carcass. You want to cry out to God to have mercy upon you because he will. Let's see Psalm 119 verse 37. This is David praying. David prayed, turn my eyes away from worthless things. You see, if you have to do away with your computer, if it's giving you spiritual trouble, do so. If you have to cut away from some friends, if you know they drag you into gossiping and backbiting, cut away from them. Do not eat honey from a dead thing. Proverbs 4.25 The Bible says, let your eyes look straight ahead. Fix your gaze directly before you. Why? The book of Hebrews answered, answered that question. You see, Hebrews 12, 2. It says, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. You see, if you let your eyes look straight ahead of you, you are looking at Jesus. All right? To take part in a polluting diet is to take part in a satanic banquet. Remember that. Now, the third problem that Samson had for him to become a human wreck was he stayed in a perilous den. He had a poisonous desire. He had a polluting diet. And now he is staying in a perilous den. Samson refused to keep company with his Jewish peers who were equally under the same Hebraic, Hebraic covenant. Instead, he found friendship among people who knew nothing about his God. Or the, or the commands of, of his God. He found friendship among the Philistines. Can you believe that? Guess what? One of those friends ended up marrying his wife. <laughs> those are friends, right? Of course they are not. Let's read Judges 14.15. The book of Judges 14.15. But it came to pass on the seventh day that they said to Samson's wife, Entice your husband that he may explain the riddle to us, or else we will burn you and your father's house with fire. Have you invited us in order to take what is ours? Is that not so? Huh? You see, Samson had posed the riddle to them, and he said, If you are able to explain it, I'll give you 30 garments uh, uh, and uh, a few uh, gifts. I, I can't remember the exact. Uh, and he said, If you, if you cannot, uh, un unwrap my riddles, then you will give it to me. And they, and they agreed. Now they tried, they didn't know what to do. So they went to his wife and he called them his friends. You see, there is problem when a Christian is unequally yoked with an unbeliever. When you call somebody your friend and they don't have the same spiritual uh, uh, values that you have, they don't have the same value of God that you have. You are looking for trouble. Seriously. Let's look into the book of Proverbs 13 verse 20. Proverbs 13 20. I love to quote this a lot. He that walketh with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. You see, if you walk with wise people, you will be wise. So move with people that can help you, not people that will destroy you. And how do you know if somebody is going to destroy you? It's not only when they talk about you. It's not only when they gossip about you. If you don't have the same values, spiritual values, because your spiritual life determines your physical life. If they don't share the same spiritual values with you, it's time to move. Okay? Move. To keep company with the godless is to seek a falling with the thoughtless. Remember that. Now, let's go to the last part of what caused Samson's uh, problem to become a human wreck. Samson played with a pretty Delilah. Now, he's not only having Philistines as his friends, now he has Delilah 
which is the biggest problem he had, really. Samson's life began a steady downward spiral after he met Delilah. I mean, it was a free fall from that point on. Samson, remember, means sunshine. I hope you still remember that. Sunshine. Now, do you want to know what Delilah means? Are you ready? It means languishing, weakening, deteriorating, declining. That's some name, huh? When sunshine meets declining, weakening, deteriorating, who doesn't know what's going to happen? Delilah was like an iceberg to Samson. Samson life, Samson's life got destroyed through the catalyst work of Delilah, just as an iceberg destroyed the Titanic. You see why we titled the lesson the Titanic? Icebergs are beautiful to behold, but they can be a perfidious, that is deceitful, invite to destruction. Delilah asked for Samson's source of extraordinary power four times. Four times. You see, because she's out to destroy. What is your own Delilah? Everybody has a Delilah. It may be an attitude, a behavior, or a person. If you don't deal with your Delilah, your Delilah will deal with you. The book of Judges, chapter 16, verse 15. Judges 16, 15. Then she, Delilah, said to him, Samson, How can you say I love you when your heart is not with me? You have mocked me these three times and have not told me where your great strength lies. Listen, to the credit of Delilah, she's not a liar. Uh-uh, she's not. She went for the jugular. Where is the source of your power? So I will know how somebody can afflict you. She was very clear about her mission. So it makes you wonder what Samson was thinking. What happened? Samson turned Delilah's determination to a game, you see? So in the process, Samson made a fool of himself. At first he said, if you get a fresh bowstring and tie me with it, you get me. And he woke up from his sleep, that's what he found on his hand. Delilah asked again, he said, if you put my uh, seven locks of hair, if you tie it together, then that's it. He woke up again, his hair, where the locks of his hair were tied together. Now, somebody with an ounce of intelligence would have said, Hey, lady, what is going on? What is going on? The first time, the second time? Are you trying to kill me? Uh-uh, not something. He turned it into a game. Let's see what the book of Proverbs has to say. Uh, God is really talking to us from the uh, book of Proverbs today. Chapter 14, verse 9, Proverbs 49. It says, Fools make a mockery of sin, but among the righteous there is favor. Listen, if you are doing bad stuff in, the, in your privacy, and you are saying nobody sees me, and you are, you are keeping with that evil stuff that you are doing in your closet, you have, you have become a fool. A fool. Because God is looking at you. What you thought is a closed or private uh, closet uh, 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 situation on earth is an open scandal in heaven. The whole of heaven is looking at what you are doing in your privacy. So if you have any skeleton in your, in, your, in your closet, listen, God will forgive you. But you have to expose the devil. Because what you uncover... As Pastor Adrian Roger said, God covers. What you cover, God uncovers. Okay? So do yourself a favor and do that uh, damage to the devil. Uncover whatever secret, evil secret, that you are keeping in your life. Don't help the devil to destroy your life. Expose your Delilah to God. If you have to talk to your husband or to your wife, or you have somebody that you have to confess to, pray about it fast, look for, uh, uh, for faith-based counseling to help you which way to go, and confess. 
But don't cover Delilah. Delilah is out to destroy you. All right? Because if Samson had done the right thing to run away from Delilah or to expose Delilah that, hey, listen, people, she's trying to kill me, maybe Samson wouldn't have gone that tragic route. So to persistently sin is to proficiently sink. That's why when Samson sank, that's it. To persistently sin is to proficiently sink. Now today, we have done Titanic part one, the cause, what led to it. Samson had a poisonous desire. He had a polluting diet. He stayed in a perilous den. He played with a pretty Delilah. Next week, by the grace of God, we are going to talk about the lessons from the Titanic, Samson. Now, if you have been listening to me, I believe by now, you, you, if you are following me, you know that you are designed by God for a purpose. You are not an accident. Now, if you don't know what your purpose in life is, I've said it before, it all starts with God. And that God is also Jesus. So if you are willing to start your journey to know the purpose for which you were born, click the left-hand corner, the top left-hand corner of this screen, and it will take you to Want to Know Jesus page of our website. And we have some instructions there for you. And you can start your journey to finding out your purpose in life. Now, for believers, if you have any Delilah in your life, don't be pretty about, don't be nice to Delilah. Delilah is not nice. No. Whatever it is, deal with it ruthlessly by the word of God and prayer. Get Delilah out of your life. You need a divorce from Delilah. Okay? And let Jesus begin to use you as the gift he has sent you to the world to be. I will see you next week to conclude this, all right? But before I let you go, let us pray. Father, we thank you. Thank you for your word. Lord, help us. As we are going to ruminate over this message, to be honest, not to deceive ourselves. Holy Spirit, move in our lives. Open our eyes, O Lord, and give us the grace to agree with you to root out what needs to be rooted out in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I will see you next week. If Jesus has not split the sky open.